Hi, my name is Reed, and I'm the creator of the dynamic physics chain asset that you can get on the Unreal Marketplace. Today, I wanted to create a video in order to demonstrate some of the features that the chain has and how you can use it in your own world. So this is the one of the maps that come with the asset itself. You can kind of see that it demonstrates some of the features of the chains. Uh, we have a hanging chain here and a rope version as well. Uh, it's just using a different mesh from the original chains. I'm actually going to go over each of the features individually, so let's hop into a different world. All right, so here I've already messed around with the chain, but let's go back and let's actually throw in a blueprint. So the chain is made out of uh, blueprint links, and uh, we have two different chain types here uh, in version 1.1. One is the simple chain, and the other one is uh, one specifically made for hanging objects off of. So we're just going to use the, the standard chain here to start, pull this up, and uh, here's our chain. If you notice, uh, the default links, they seem to be a little tight. So let's start off with our link distance multiplier, and you can stretch those uh, links out right there. That's better. Um, all chains have four different attachment types, so loose, both ends fixed, uh, the starting end right here fixed, and the end point fixed. Uh, in this example, let's just start with the start point fix. So only this point and we want to basically enable simulate chain and I'm going to leave allow chain to snap on. And as you see, that's all there is to it. Just throw it in your world, simulate chain and you can press play and just like that. And to demonstrate that it's simulating, let's actually throw in a cube here. I'm going to make it movable. And let's eject and move that cube here. As you see, the whole chain is reacting like so. And since I have that toggle on the chain uh, to allow it to snap, hard force, so hard movement, will actually cut the chain links off like so. So yeah, each chain, uh, basically you can choose the number of links. Uh, let's start here at the top. So you can choose like, 50 links, you could choose two links, even one link. Let's do 50 links. And the max chain length here actually adapts to the number of links, uh, but it's mainly a feature used for the chain gun. Uh, you can also change out the skeletal mesh. So we've got square variant, like a diamond type chain, a good ring, like an O-ring throw those in a little bit and if you press play it just takes them like so and the chains a little bit longer let's stretch this out to the hundred oh, there we are press play and just like so look at that it's pretty fun to play with All right, so each chain, this is the start fixed option. If we choose loose, then the entire chain simulates physics, like so. If we attach the end point, it's pretty self-explanatory. I'm just gonna show it all off here. So end point fixed, and last but not least, uh, both ends fixed. So this one I find particularly useful because it's um, good for decoration, hanging things. Something I do want to add in the future or in the future is being able to change the distance between the start and the end point, but maintain the length. So when you start, it would actually dangle further down. Um, but that's something that you can actually just do by moving the actor itself. So let's here we need to get the link there. And as you can see, you can just move that and uh, suit it to your needs. So each chain has a break threshold. This is just, um, the chain is made out of skeletal meshes and then each skeletal mesh connected by a physics constraint. Um, what this allows you to do is break the center of physics constraint in the chain when it's pulled too far or it's a linear threshold is met. This is because I've had different issues, I guess, in the past 
trying to get the chain to not freak out when you're pulling it too far, especially when you're using it with a player and attaching it to a wall. Uh, there's tons of different issues. So that's something I'm still uh, looking to fix. But for now, allowing the chain to snap is quite important. As if you change this threshold, let's uh, reduce it by a lot. And you see just the weight of it just snaps the chain. So let's undo that. All right, uh, next is random snapping point. Random snapping point basically allows the chain to snap um, at a random location between the length of the chain. So let's see if this, uh, it might pick something down the middle, but as you see, it's, it's actually pretty much down the middle. It's a bad example, but let's give it a shot again. Let's try it from the edge. There you are, yeah. So that allows it, the chain to just break in different ways. Uh, if you want to give variation, chains can also actually have different links in version 1.1. So right now, you, as you can see, we have a chain mesh pattern and this pattern makes up the entire chain and we're just using the design five link. So if we were to actually add an extra element, you notice that every other chain disappears and that's because we don't have anything selected here. So if we give it design one, you can see that you can actually mix and match your links. And this can be done for as many elements as you want in the array. So if you want those three different links, and then you, that still works with your distance multiplier. My in play here. Yeah, so just typing in values seems to always be a bit more performant. Look at that. Different links. You can also actually randomize the links that you have in this array. So let's just click that here. And on construct, we'll just show you um, what it could look like here. But once you press play, it's actually going to randomize once more. But now you can have, you know, two O rings and then a series of links, maybe a mix and match. It's good for some people, especially if you're making like pool boys or uh you know, multicolored ropes or even toy toy links like those old kid toy chains. Uh, you could definitely get away with having different links, basically change their random order, putting on the random snap point, and this thing comes quite interesting very quickly. Look at that. It's pretty performant. Uh, I'm running at 120 as you see. But that's just with one chain. Um, it is less performant the more chains you add, obviously. Uh, I find, you know, 30, 30 to 40 is pushing it, especially if each one consists of 100 links. So a lot of physics uh, simulating. The chains actually don't have shadows casting, uh, which helps with their performance. And I've actually improved them a lot since 1.1, so they're, they're less glitchy um, and a bit more weighty. All right, let's move on to the scale. It's pretty self-explanatory, but there you go. You can change the uh, scale of the links, have a smaller chain. I find the smaller the chain, um, the higher the breaking threshold and the less, I guess, stable the chain is. So that is something to be cautious of is uh, chains can, can be weird. There we go, that one was totally fine. All right. Um, another thing I've added with this asset is the object hanging chain. So let's pull one of those in here. As you can see, it's got the uh, chain link here and a static mesh. Uh, the static mesh can be changed at any time. I've just included a lantern um, and then a hanging distance multiplier. So depending on the stretch of the chain, you might have to actually use this this multiplier here to adjust uh, the aesthetic here. So let's just uh, stretch this chain out like so. And as you can see, it's, it hasn't met yet. So let's just move that in and you just press play and it breaks. Um, this is because of the random snapping point. It seems to put a lot of strain on it. And I'll just rotate it down too. There you are. And let's uh, get this in line and mess around with it again. Oh yeah. 
So it's basically the exact same as the chain, just with the ability to snap on static meshes. Uh, and you do lose the ability to change your attachment types as this one is just built to dangle. Um, I'm sure anyone can fix it to their needs if, if need be. And I'm going to go over into the other map here to show you the grappling chain. That's not it. There we are. The grappling chain is my favorite. This is actually what I started working on uh, probably back in January. And this thing here, if you just left click, you can fire a set of links out. You can actually change the distance of the links. Uh, sorry, the, the length of the chain before retracting. So this that's 200 links there. And uh, with a, a delay of 0 0.25. So if we go into the chain gun, and the chain controls here, we can see we have firing speed, retraction speed, your distance link multiplier from the chain and the break threshold, uh, also the max chain link. So 250 is the actual value there. So the way, oh, there we are. The way the grappling hook works is you can basically left click and right click to fire and retract. It doesn't interact with physics objects in in the sense of attaching, but it does react with other chains, ropes, and uh, dynamic meshes. Look at that. And you yourself actually react with the ropes too. So if you try pushing the rope, you notice that you can't seem to push it out of the way. There we are. Put some strain on that rope and rip it. And you can even move these physics objects around. So this is all included in version 1.1. There you have it. That's most of the features of the dynamic physics chain. Um, as you can see, you can use a, a rope link uh, to basically simulate your ropes. And if you were to give it different elements, you can actually change out those, those uh, meshes there. So let's stretch these out just so you can see. Yeah. So it's just a bunch of rope links, like so. One last thing I want to go over is saving out these chain links as static meshes. This is a requested feature and actually one that I found kind of difficult, uh, but I did find a way and I just want to show you guys the workflow I use. So let's uh, say we want to save this chain as it's simulating physics. So let's press play. So he's got a nice uh, bend there, but let's, let's give it a bit more. Bit, bit more dramatic. Sure, just like that. So what you can actually do is, uh, all the links are created. If we actually select our chain, the root is still here, um, but you can actually convert to static meshes and it's going to convert each link into a skeletal mesh, like so. Just freezes it in place. And as you see, the entire link chain here is highlighted. Uh, with the BP chain highlight, the blueprint we're still using, you can actually right click, convert BP chain to static mesh, something Unreal includes. And I'm just going to bring this down and save it in this folder. And let's call this chain one. Very creative. There we go. And if you check it out, that's the physics chain. Now uh, frozen in time. As you can see, though, this is obviously not game ready or performant. Uh, so what I would do is actually export it, clean it up in Blender, uh, un unwrap it again, and then bring it back, uh, just so that it isn't it isn't so uh, heavy. Like it is forty five thousand triangles, twenty seven thousand verts here. So how about I go through that quick? So let's actually right click this um, asset export. I'm going to call it chain one and throw it on the desktop here. I'm going to use the default settings. And let's open up Blender. Alrighty, so here in Blender, I have a basic scene opened up. I'm just going to press A, X, and delete everything. Let's import the chain right on my desktop. There we have it. I'm going to press one on the numpad. Let's bring it up and transform it over. Now I just want to bring this 
set the root into the center here. So you know, all transforms. So the chain right now is pretty high poly. Um, and we don't want that if you were going to use this in a video game, even if it was a static mesh. Uh, so what we want to do just to quickly show this off is, uh, let's decimate it, let's bring it down. Obviously it's gonna, it's gonna lose some of that detail, but let's bring it down even to, let's do 3,500. Okay. And then instead of shading smooth, I'm actually going to, uh, recalculate the outside. Let's clean up, make sure there's nothing nasty about that mesh. Uh, let's shade it flat. And I'm going to press U and just smart UV project it here. Uh, let's give it some Island. I don't like stretching and let's check that out. As you can see our, our chain is just basically unwrapped. Um, I probably would spend more time on a chain if it was actually in my game, but uh, just to demonstrate it. So we've got kind of like a low poly chain here. And let's export this as an FBX, and we're just going to select mesh, just a selected object. I'm going to call this new chain. I'll throw that on the desktop, like so. Let's close this out, go back into Unreal. And let's import that new chain in. I'm going to give it just the default settings, no, no materials or anything. Let's import that in. And as you can see, now the chain has a new uh, origin point. This one's set to static. Let's make it movable there. And uh, let's throw on a material. Let's do the metal chain. And there you have it. You might need to make a new instance of the metal chain. Um, depending on your use case, or you probably have your own materials too, depending on what you're using these for. But let's just bring that up. So maybe four, like so. And that's how you can get static uh, chains in the game. This one in this case is low poly, but great for decoration. Great way to use this physics asset um, in order to create static assets. And the workflow isn't too bad. The chain uh, you can actually find on the marketplace here. Uh, this is what it looks like. I'm going to be updating in the next few days. Uh, and it details some of the features here and a link to the original video uh, that shows off some of these features. I'm also going to put a link to this tutorial here. Um, that way people have a better understanding of how to use this thing. Um, I hope you guys enjoy. If you have any questions uh, or comments, even criticism, it's all welcome. Uh, just feel free to leave something below. Thanks. Thanks.